I think if there's one takeaway from that, the World Bank don't do things in half measures. And I think the fact that they've actually produced this study, which is again incredibly relevant for this moment in time, that's really the, the meaningful piece of this game. As a simple guy who really doesn't understand this world, what I understand is we're talking about a 21st century dating game. It's trying to find the best investment to go to the best projects in a very, very complicated world. And by producing the research which allows the platform to produce the metrics, then the investors can actually have some, some understanding that the projects they're putting money in are actually going to produce what they say they will produce. And that's a key piece of this game. And in that context, I'm now going to turn to the next speakers. And this, I could say this is something totally different, but it isn't something totally different. Because if you believe in a concept of sustainable development and green growth, which is coherent and comprehensive, our next set of speakers are going to, and we have two speakers speaking together, um, Maria Bello, actor and activist, and Claire Munn, who is chairman of the communication group, and they're going to talk to us about gay women and some of the work that they've been doing already, and now they're going to accelerate as a consequence of this consortium which is coming together today. Maria, Claire, the floor is yours. Coming for that. <laughs> <laughs> Claire, are you already falling over I things? Want to glass. Hello, all. Hello. All right. Yeah, I'm used to the microphone. Uh, I'm used to singing. Okay. Good afternoon, everybody. So, this is Maria Bello, and things you may know about her are as follows she's an award winning actress. She's unfortunate looking and has no sense of style. But you, can, <laughs> and you can also find outtakes of some of her movies online, which her teenage son's friend just did, and half clothed. Nice. <laughs> Not as exciting for my son. Sure. And this is Claire Munn. Things you might see or notice about her is that you're very unattractive as well. Thank you. An entrepreneur. She has the Zimbabwean accent, her homeland. And um, so it makes her appear really smart, we always said. We always say. But the truth is, she is really smart, and half the time I have no idea even what she's talking about. Um, and uh, uh, you usually wear a really great hat. I don't know why you're not wearing one today. Well, I've picked over a glass. I've lost my hat, so Maria, I'm not that smart. <laughs> things you probably do not know about Maria is that she's worked in international women's rights for over 27 years. She has an NGO in Haiti, and she's basically been doing a lot with women's group works for well, a long, long time. But she's been involved in social impact investing, so her interest has been in business. And she also likes to watch House and Garden TV when she's not being a show to a 12-year-old son, who's my godson. And things you might not know about Ms. Munn are that uh, she started her own NGO in Zimbabwe when she was 20 years old. She works with women all over Africa. She started numerous very successful companies. She's raised, tw she's raised $25 million for technology, marketing and branding. And a few failures, by the way. <laughs> marketing and branding companies. Um, and she has always been interested in social impact investing before it was very sexy. Um, she's also a very bad cook. After seeing the chew, you're definitely a better cook than I am. Yeah. So we founded Social Impact for Women to be a social impact investing center that identifies potential businesses around the world that are run by and benefit women in emerging markets and might have considerable financial return for investors. Yes, what Claire's actually saying, because half the time I don't know what all of you are saying on a financial level, but here's what I do know, that most people are paying lip service to the statistics that investing in women isn't only a nice thing, but it's smart business. But what I want to know, speaking to policymakers often, speaking to NGO leaders, speaking to entrepreneurs, is where's the money? Where's the money for all of these great women's projects, entrepreneurs that pay 90% of their money back as opposed to 33% of men running businesses in the emerging markets? 
<coughs> exactly. So we are lucky enough to know many women's groups working with thousands of women all over the world. So we do indeed have an idea based on what women in communities want as good businesses, but also see it as a financial good return for them, their potential investors, and of course the communities. So when Gate Global Impact approached us about really starting Gate Women with you, it was a no-brainer. With your platform and funneling, it was a no-brainer. Yeah. So with our partners, including uh, Gate Trips and Gate Impact Wi-Fi, which I think is the most fascinating thing that's coming out of this, we're not only paying lip service anymore to the idea of social impact investing in women um, that are profitable for their communities as well, because we know when we invest in women, that goes down to their communities and their children and education and starts from there. So you know, take, for example, um, a story of one of our partners who was recently in Zimbabwe and he was with his family and he asked a village, um, yes, these villagers, if I could give you anything, what would, what would your answer be? And, you know, after cries of a car, a tractor, a gun, things like that, this teenage young, very thin woman tentatively raised her, hand, raised her hand and said, quietly, I would like access to the internet. And she was asked why, because um, he immediately conjured up video games. And she said, well, with great confidence, she said, well, to educate myself, of course. So that's why Claire and I, uh, we founded We Advance University, which is an online educational site with video lessons for women all over Haiti. Well, what happened is the internet service is so expensive that in rural communities they don't have access to it. So with this new white space, uh, uh, new uh, with gate impact Wi-Fi, we knew that this could be a home run and can really help women and people and their communities be be uh, taught all over the world. I'm going to hear more about that from Peter Hen Henderson in a little bit. So we are delighted about how the platform will also allow for transparency and collaboration. Because I think one of the biggest things is, you know, allowing for this gate community and other incredible organizations to really allow themselves um, an opportunity to tend to team up with effective guidance. The guidance and the structure I think is crucial here. And so we're very practical in that way. We have business plans by women for women in emerging markets. We have uh, vetted these businesses and these women that we've worked with for years in, uh, in uh, areas of cosmetics and education, agricultural products, dairy and poultry production, and food and manufacturing, marketing distribution chains. Um, so we're really, really excited. We look forward to actualizing this with Gate Impact, and so happy to be here today. We had eight minutes, Jeffrey, not four. <laughs> <laughs> it was eight. It was supposed to be four. four.